Coming to you live from parts unknown. Here are two guys hanging out, chatting about life, crime, and passing time. One loves to wear his sunglasses inside. He's a connoisseur of tasteless thoughts and an avid fan of Dawson's Creek. Who isn't? And the other is a man who's always willing to one-up your story. He loves his lawn a little too much and has a closet full of white New Balance sneakers. Who doesn't? Here are Captain and Morgan. Welcome to our weird, weird world. We'll take you back to the (laughs) mid-90s. Every week, traveling back in time. I, I guess that's what our show is now. Is a weird world. A weird, weird world. Yeah, it's harder to say than you'd think. I, somebody said, well, what's the show like? I said, I don't know. It's weird. Why do you think? Why do you think we always end up back in the mid-90s? I don't know. I was, a- I was talking to a friend about this because I was like, I've been friends with Morgan for so long but it seems as if we had a lot of stories from maybe the first five years. Yeah. And then we got boring. And I think for the next 10 years or so, maybe even 15 years, we talked about the first five years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You think about it. After the first five years, we were probably drinking a lot. And so a lot of our stories are probably involving evolved being drunk and therefore we probably have less memories of that. <laughs> well, yeah, possibly. But, uh, but I think the drinking has gone down. It's been less. Oh yeah. In the last five years. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say than the first, uh, well, I don't know. I, you know, now with these white claws, it just, Always reminds me of Zima Night. <laughs> <laughs> like these white claws. And the story is pretty simple. It, it's it's that, and we won't get into the details, but with the white claws, it just reminds me. See, what happened was you always have to try to have a friend to buy you some booze. Yeah. And so. Could, we'll see, because I was, I was 19. I was 19. You were 18 at the time, I believe. Yeah. I think that's about right. And so it wasn't that I had a 21-year-old or 22-year-old. It's just I was in a band with Nick, and Nick knew people that could get booze. Yeah. So it was basically like, hey, can you help me out? My father's going out of town. I might have some people over. And he he was like, no big deal. And I gave him some cash. Mm -hmm. And he simply just said, well, what do you want? And I said, it doesn't matter because he, he didn't want it to be complicated. And so I said, it doesn't really matter whatever, you know, girls would like to drink. Cause I knew we're going to have some couples over and, he, and he basically came back with a case, a case of Zima, <laughs> which was very fitting because if you remember the start of that night, we started that night off by watching, we were watching real world. Were we? Yeah. I don't know what season it was or who was on it, but I remember I got over, you know, got over to your place and we, you know, we had the, 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 the case of Zima and we were down the basement watching real world. Well, I also remember thinking that like Zima is going to be awesome Yeah, because I drink a lot of Sprite. Like people have their go-to drink uh, or like go-to soda, Mm -hmm. I'd say. Um, and mine for the longest time was Sprite, but I don't think it was cause I like Sprite. It was just basically lemon lime soda because my dad would always buy uh, two liters mm-hmm. and they'd go, they'd go flat. So like Coke flat is not so good. Dr. Pepper flat, not so good. Yeah. Lemon lime cheap soda. It was better than most if it went flat. Yeah. At least you got the Sprite. My, my. My mom would get us Fresca. Oh no no no! I didn't get I didn't get Sprite. I got oh. I got lemon lime soda. <laughs> like you know, the big cool. was it Big K or whatever? Uh, or was it, it just lemon lime soda? It, 
it was uh, whatever Kroger brand. Would oh yeah, be. Big K. Yeah, so Big K. Yeah. So you'd get the Big K. I would get Fresca. Every now and then, my dad would surprise me because it would be like a three for whatever sale, and he'd come back with a cola, mm-hmm. <laughs> just some regular cola. That's the best is when like the name is regular cola. <laughs> And maybe like a root beer, yeah, w- or the lemon lime, uh, yeah. Where every now and then, like if it was a five four, because um, my my dad was a little bit of a hillbilly, and so he would he would have these weird things that he would get, and but one of them was he would get grape soda, just grape soda, which I I love grape soda now. Like I mean I'm not I don't like go get it a bunch. I'm just saying that if I see it, and that's one of my options. I might take the grape soda, but that's kind of like, like that's a kinda hillbilly like, move, right? That's kind of like me and Tahitian treat. That stuff is like <laughs> it's like crack in a bottle. I see it and like my mouth waters. Like I gotta get that Tahitian treat. Give me it. I used to get every now and then. I think because my father just liked the bottles, he'd get the IBC root beer mm-hmm. or the IBC uh, cream soda. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, you know I'm talking about it. Jizzing in your pants. Cream the I, soda. The IBC cream soda. Yeah. The, so, and then I remember like, but with the Zima, mm-hmm. which, which I haven't drank a White Claw. So I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what they, <laughs> but I do, <laughs> I do know that somebody posted online. It was like uh, uh, natural light uh, seltzer soda or whatever. Natty light? Yeah. Oh, and I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke that like all oh, White Claw came out, the and and so now Natty Light is coming out with their version. <laughs> I thought it was a joke. Like there's no way they came out with their own version. Yeah, uh, they did. Natty Light seltzer <laughs> or whatever. I don't know what flavors it is either. <laughs> whatever it is, it's watered down. Water, watered down <laughs> water. Oh man, I I remember drinking a Bush Light one time, going to to work on a I, we did roofing in the summer, um. So one of our friends' stepfathers was a um, you know contractor, general contractor. So he'd take on a handful of roofs a year, mm-hmm. and he would hire a bunch of his stepkids' friends to help out. But it was it was a great job because. Let's say you're going to make 500 bucks. He'd say, you're making 500 bucks. It doesn't matter if it takes you seven days, nine days, or if it takes you three. Yeah. So one of our friends, JT, picked me up. I just brushed my teeth. And he stole a bush light or maybe two bush lights from his (laughs) his father. And he's like, let's drink these. And I'm like, go on. (laughs) It seemed like like the manly thing at the time, like we're going to go do some roofing. Yeah. So let's drink this. Oh man, I I was halfway through the beer. I was just I wasn't throwing up. I, I but I was spitting up the foam because the, the beer was like ninety eight percent foam. <laughs> but it tasted awful. Oh god. With my <laughs> mint toothpaste. <laughs> No OSHA violations there at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that um, that was a great job though because one, it was really hard. It was very difficult. It was a lot. Um, it took a lot out of you. Yeah, but we could finish in three days, and so you get paid a lot of money for the three days. It's a lot of hard work though, man. Yeah, and well, and when you're not um. One of the skilled guys, you're basically taking shingles up to the roof and ripping the roof oh, off. Yeah, but any anybody that's ne- you know not even that handy of a person, they can show you how to rip a roof off. Mm-hmm. You know, in no time. Oh yeah, it's easier to d- destroy something than to build something. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a sledgehammer, I can take care of a wall in no time. Yeah. <laughs> In my luck, I'd just hit the studs, but it'd be like metal studs. Like a, it'd be like one of those cartoons, you hit the, the metal stud and doing. I'd like to go back and watch real world, like season one, two, or three. Yeah, when it was like real. 
Yeah, like up to like maybe I don't know what what season, maybe real world seven, six or seven, maybe. Mm-hmm. And because for whatever reason, I watched um, something on my YouTube, on the YouTubes, and now I keep getting these su- suggested videos of what you know. Go watch MTV Challenge. You know, like where they oh. have the, the they they challenge. It's like a whole like competition thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Which I haven't watched in years. But what's crazy is, so I watched one of the clips. It's the same. It's the same mother suckers from like back when I watched it. How old are these guys now? I don't know. Like ninety. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, I'm trying to it. see now. I'm trying to look up. Okay, so if this would have been Zima Knight would have been like ninety nine, right? Mm. Yeah, because I think I think you had recently graduated. Hmm. Were we graduated? I think yeah. I think it was. I think it was a season, or the or, or maybe was it before? Yeah, it was probably. Let me think about this. It, it was. <sighs> oh, it. You know what? It would have been before I think we graduated. Uh, I think it was after because of who I was with at that time. Yeah. Because the summer after I graduated, we we were broken up. Mm-hmm. So it had to have been the summer of ninety nine. The summer, the summer after you graduated. After you graduated. No, I'm saying the summer after you graduated, you were single. Yes, this is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was single from. Which would make sense because that that would have been the year that you moved up to Indiana. Yeah. Welcome to this world. <laughs> so we would have been watching Real World Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I don't think I was into it though. Like I, did, what I was realizing, you know, thinking just back on, on, on everything, because I think there's something happening this month with the Friends, mm-hmm. the show Friends, and I've seen probably every episode. Yeah, one of the things that I think is super clever about the show is the show descriptions. If you go, like, uh, the other day I was flipping through the TV just trying to find something to watch for, like, a half an hour before a football game c- came on. <laughs> so my options were <clears throat> Old Friends episodes or Big Bang Theory. And Big Bang Theory, like, in the beginning, when it was just mainly the dudes with mm-hmm. with one girl, Penny, the, I really liked that show. I thought it was unique. And then the, eventually uh, they all got girlfriends and all that stuff. Yeah. And it became like friends, you know, oh, two people yeah. living ac- across the hall from each other. Uh, each person had a boyfriend, girlfriend type situation, which look, I understand that's, you know, that's like the sitcom norm. Yeah. But it, I, I remember watching Big Bang Theory at the beginning and thinking this is unique. Four nerdy guys and one girl. You know, and uh, so anyways, when I was going through, if you look at like the guide on a Friends episode, it'll say the one where Monica, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's always the one where, which is brilliant because that's how you would describe it to one of your friends. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about like, so the actual like title, the, the the episode. So episode or season two, episode three would be the one where blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. They might have like a, they might have a title, but the, the, the description starts with the one. You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and that's how you describe it to your friends. But what's also, <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, but, uh, Robert De Niro is, uh, he's suing his old, uh, assistant. Okay. Which is funny because I just watched him in a movie called The Intern. Cute little movie, kind of stupid. Yeah. Um, worth watching though. I'd say worth watching. That, that that's that's all I'm doing now in this Netflix world, Hulu <laughs> world, YouTube world, HBO world, every million you know Amazon Prime, 
there is so much content out there that now they take the dog shittiest of dog shit movies <laughs> and we'll put them out there. Yeah. I watched this one that was so bad. So now I just go, I just tell people it's worth watching. Wait, even if it's crappy? No, 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 no. I'm saying that's, it's either worth watching or don't waste your time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't try to do like, oh, I think you'd like this one. I just go, worth watching. You, you know, you're either going to get to the end of the movie and go, well, that was a waste of time. Yeah. Or you're going to go, not, not so bad. But, uh, but yeah, the, 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 that's the problem with the, the the internet or the the streaming service world right now is, it, and I think we're going to get rid of that. There's going to be less shit out there, uh, and also what you're going to start seeing, which I saw this week, was I can't remember if it was Netflix or HBO, but one of them had like a string, like maybe fifty new movies, oh, okay. but they were all old movies. Oh. Like we just added these and it was like 50 really good movies that you could watch over and over. And yeah. Friends, I believe, is the number one watch thing on Netflix. But I digress. So anyways, Robert De, <laughs> Robert De Niro fired his assistant. Okay. She was still in money. Okay. But yeah. the, the other thing is they figured out that she watched like some absurd number of... Uh, Friends episodes within a week. It was like she watched fifty five episodes or something ridiculous. Spending way too much time watching Friends. Yeah, I mean you're somebody's assistant. Yeah, and yeah, you probably have some leeway, and yeah, maybe you can watch Friends while you do emails or whatever. Mm -hmm. But fifty five episodes—that's all, or whatever. However many they're they're half an hour each, or with no commercials. What about twenty twenty minutes? Yeah, so I've been, I don't know how this happened. Uh, earlier this year, I rewatched all the Friends episodes. Okay. And it and it wasn't like, it was basically like when there was nothing on, I just put it on in 20 minutes. And so in an hour, you can get through three. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can crank through these. Well, so I recently started watching uh, that 70s show again. And it's like, I'm cranking through them because they're like 19 minutes long. Oh, yeah. But 55? I don't know what the number is. We'll say 55 in, we said in a week or whatever? Yeah. I mean, I could do 55 in a week, but that's if I'm not working. Yeah, you're not doing anything else. Yeah. I've actually been lately with shows, pulling my laptop out and and putting on some generic, you know, Friends, Mm -hmm. Big Bang Theory. I, I do find that, like, I don't pay attention to the show that much. I, I still work. Yeah. And I actually get a lot done that way. Um, And then if something is funny, you know, maybe you rewind it or whatever. But I also think it, like, it keeps the, the mood light. Um, The mood light. That may, <laughs> makes it sound like there's, like, a blue spot. <laughs> no, no, I meant, like, the mood... um. Not so heavy. Yeah. Especially when you're like, I think I got through 20 emails today. Uh, One of the cases repeated twice. But out of the 20 emails, like some of it was just like, like your show, blah, blah, blah. But, um, but you know, you get these new cases that maybe you never heard of and they give you a link. So the next thing you know, you're spending like five minutes reading about a mm-hmm. case that you never heard before. Yeah. Um, so that can get a little, like, especially if you're starting your day, get your coffee brewing. I'm going to knock out some emails. And the first five first are one like, is hey, like, look into this murder. You want to check out this case? It's a three-year-old that went missing Ugh. from Buffalo. Yeah. What? Happy Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You're going to love this. Yeah, it's like that's uh, the equivalent for me would be, and this happened twice last week, Monday and then Tuesday, where, uh, yeah, I, it was actually over the weekend. I get a uh, a work email and it's a meeting request for eight a.m. That's not how you want to start your week, especially you know on a Monday, on Monday, Monday, and then during Monday, you know, sometime during Monday, I get another meeting request for Tuesday. Hey, guess what? Eight a.m. Yeah, don't do that, people. 
Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> hey, can you come to our meeting on Tuesday? <laughs> Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 that's what I realized. That noise is what I realized when I, um, when I was a banker. Okay. And I, I got to a place of peace. I mean, we're talking about a, a guy that basically since, let's say, 19, I made my own paycheck. Mm hmm. Um, so I worked for myself and there's a lot of, look, it's not, the grass isn't always greener. I, I taught lessons. I think when I first started teaching lessons, I made more than most of my friends did at their jobs. Yeah. Um, but that's also when people were working like part time and going to school. So most people are going to hit maybe 20, 30 hours a week, mm -hmm. something like that. So, um, I, I think uh, at that point, I was doing better. But then once people actually got into the workforce, a little bit higher up job, and now they're working 40 hours, it was really hard to get enough students to to teach that long. Yeah. So, and then gigs and all that stuff. But you have bosses. You know, you have, the, the client is basically your boss. Right? Mm-hmm. So... So to enter the corporate world after that, it, it felt like I was defeated. And it wasn't until I really started just thinking of, um, thinking of the corporate world or my job as just like, like the office. Mm, yeah. Like that it's just silly or office or even office space. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it was like the third week or the fourth week I was at the bank and realized that my boss had like the same routine. Like, oh. like I would get in at like nine, but he was already there. Mm -hmm. Nine thirty, he had to start making the coffee. Then he'd go back to his office. Then he would come back out, get his cup of coffee. Then he'd go out to the drive thru to check them, you know. Mm -hmm. Then he'd go to the bathroom at 10. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it, it, the best thing was we're right by a Meyer, which is a grocery store. And he would go to the grocery store almost every day. Was this during lunch? No. Just randomly. For what? Oh, they're making bratwurst that night. Maybe he had to pick up some mustard. Maybe he had to pick up the bratwurst. Maybe he had to pick up... The bratwurst, the the buns, the mustard, the ketchup, the paper plates. Do that after after work. Do that at lunch. Hey, not when you're the boss. Oh, yeah. And 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 my first banking experience when I was just a I was a teller, and we're at this really small location, but we're right beside the hospital, and we're basically put in that location for the nurses and doctors. Back when you had to go to the bank for everything, like mm -hmm. to deposit your check and everything. So when I got there, the first thing I did every morning was to, <laughs> to take their drink orders. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the hospital cafeteria. Does anybody want anything? And we they had a place that was kind of like Starbucks. Mm -hmm. um, the coffees weren't as good, but um, but it was in in, in the you know, in the hospital. So, so as long as I went to the boss with like a clipboard and acted like this was serious business, they would yeah. let me go. Now, did you have any like very specific drink orders? Like I need black coffee, one Splenda, one Splenda on the side. Oh yeah. Two ice cubes, <laughs> a splash of lemon. Yeah. Well, and the other thing though too was like for a dollar, you would get the biggest soda you ever seen in your life and i just remember thinking this can't be healthy like the hospital should not sell this uh yeah they should and they need they need more patients <laughs> but the thing too about See the, 20 years <laughs> yeah <laughs> hell <laughs> hell miss elizabeth um but they also had great soda machines 
Like if you go like the best soda, mm-hmm. where's the best soda that you're ever going to have? The best soda you're ever going to have? Uh, probably from the Coke place. No, no, I'm saying like that. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, the best Coke that you're ever going to have in your life is coming from McDonald's. You think it's McDonald's? It's a whole different world of Coke. Okay, explain this. I, I, Do you I, think McDonald's gets gets like this a secret stash? I actually heard that there's there's a different recipe for the McDonald's. That's what I, I heard. I think you're right. I don't know. I think you're right. No, if you think you about no it, no evidence at all. No, but I think you're right because we're, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so if I go to McDonald's one day and I get a Coke and I'm like, oh, this is the most refreshing thing I've ever had. Yeah. And then let's say the next day I go to Wendy's or. It's not going to taste even close. No, especially like, um, surprisingly, I don't like the Coke from Chick-fil-A. Really? Yeah. You would think Chick-fil-A, because you know Chick-fil-A is a, a, a southern company, and I, I, mm-hmm. I, mean, I remember years ago hearing the rumor that the farther south you go, the sweeter the Coke is. Like they put really? more sugar in it. Yeah. So you would well, think, like sweet tea is a real big deal. Yeah. So, south. so you know, I heard the same thing with Coke. Like so, like they would they change their formula depending on. Of course, they're gonna if you know from country to country, there's probably gonna be a different formula based on taste. But mm-hmm. I was under, you know, I had always thought that, okay, if you get a Coke from Georgia or down south, it's going to have the formula there is going to have a little more sugar in it. But it doesn't translate up here because it, obviously, for whatever reason, the Chick-fil-A Coca-Cola is n- not nearly as good as McDonald's. So it says, there's a whole article that says, this is why McDonald's Coke tastes better than all the others. Because they put Coke in it. Refreshing, bubbly, and crisp. Uh, it basically says that there's a special storage. McDonald's and Coca-Cola have they've had a unique relationship. Um, uh, they have a different water filtration. Okay. Syrup math. Most fountain drink uh, machines. Uh, Oh, they pre-chill their their syrup. Oh, okay. And they also pre-chill the water. So it makes it colder? Yeah. And straw secrets. Can straw ideal secrets. It's a wider straw, so they're saying that it uh, since it's slightly wider than a typical straw, so all the coke taste can hit your taste buds. Oh my god. You know what? Wow. So yesterday, we're talking about straws, right? Yesterday I went to a um, place here in town, local cantina. Yeah. I don't know if you've been there recently, but they switched. I haven't been in a couple months. So they, they used to have like the, the paper straws. Yes. The they, little weird black ones. Yeah. So they switched it out to, they're like, I don't want to say bamboo, but they're like, <laughs> they're like wood straws or something weird, but they're so tiny. Like. Like, the, like it was like, like, it's like these things, like the hole that, the hole yeah. that the pop comes out is like the size of like a, like a pinhead. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm sitting there trying to drink my, my Coke through the stupid straw. Yeah. And, I, and I'm nothing's not a, coming out. I'm not a germ guy, but there's something about when they hand you a drink at a, re- a restaurant and they don't hand you a straw. It's already in the, in the drink. No, like, no, I don't mind if it's in the drink. Okay. I'm just saying if they hand you a a, a, a cup of Coke or whatever mm-hmm. and there's no straw at all. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're just like, here you go. So you have a problem with drinking straight out of the glass. Yeah. But not out of that same glass if it has a straw. Right. Because but it's like, but, I, but I'm a freak. I mean, like, a, a, fly, a fly could come down and, like, land in my drink and, and, and jump out. Doesn't, ah. doesn't bother me at all. I'm going to finish the drink. But for some reason, I don't want to put my lips on your glass. Yeah, because in case they didn't wash it. I don't want to. But if they didn't wash the glass, you're still drinking the, whatever's coming out yeah. of that glass with a straw. Just think about that if you're James Vanderbeek in Varsity Blues. <laughs> I don't want to drink out of your cup without a straw. <laughs> it's not as effective uh, as... I don't want your life. <laughs> I don't want 
your life. <laughs> That's a great impression. Do you remember that movie? That was like, I think that was the first MTV movie. I remember bits. I, I remember the movie, but you know, bits and pieces. I could, if you asked me what the movie was about, I could probably tell you. That's where I got Purple Headed Yogurt Slinger. Was that from? Who That's said from that? Bar- Varsity Blue. But who said it? Because there was that one one point where, like, the teacher says something about like masturbating, mm-hmm. and it's uh, and 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 she asked him like, "Are there any other like names for it, or something like that?" And he and he has a whole list. Yeah. Let's see if I can find the list. Varsity Blues. Purple. Oh, quotes. Should be in quotes, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, here we go. We'll find this. Yeah, old Jam James Vanderbeek, and the and they dyed his hair. Uh, well, I think I think maybe he's a maybe he's naturally brunette. I'm not for sure, but he was blonde in Dawson's Creek. I think he's. It all comes back to Dawson's Creek. Let's be real about that. <laughs> That's the answer to everything. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things. They put them wieners on the glass. Oh. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Uh, the male erection. Uh, pitching a tent, sporting a wood. Um, the march is on. Stiff, stiffy. Mr. Mortis. Uh, Rigor Mortis <laughs> has set in. <laughs> uh, flesh rocket. Uh, Jack, what? Jack's magic beanstalk. Um, tall, uh, tall Tommy. Mushroom on a stick, Mister Mushroom Head, Purple Headed Yogurt Slinger, and uh, Pedro. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting in like the uh, the writers' room trying to come up with all these? And what was like what was like left out? <laughs> Mister Mortis, Rigor Mortis has set in. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I heard uh, something. It was, it was a comedy show, and they, they were talking about Rigor Mortis, and I thought. That's something that I haven't really, I think a lot of the true crime world has really learned the term rigor mortis, I'd say based on the Adnan Syed case. Parts of it, yeah. You think so? Well, I think with Adnan, it was probably more along the lines of, um, oh, I can't think what it is, Uh, the uh, blood setting. Um, Why is my mind going blank right now? Well, that's uh, because levi- le- levidity. Levidity. Yeah, the, yeah, I levidity. think more so than rigor mortis. Well, that's because I just got done saying stiff, stiffy, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mortis. <laughs> rigor mortis. Flesh rocket. I just remember like he the way he laid out that quote was so good. And then when he said purple headed yogurt slinger, I just thought that was the most disgusting thing I ever heard because you know Women might not know this, but not all men are the same. Really? No, I'm serious. Okay. Like, like we're all dumbasses, right? Yes. Men are dumbasses. Yes. We know that much. But we're not all the same. Some men like to fart around other men. Like, there is a stereotypical <laughs> guy out there, right? Who is like, I'm going to go rip a fart. No, but you know, like, yeah. your buddies are like, oh, man, I'm hilarious. <laughs> and you're like... Don't find it funny. Yeah. It just smells now. Yeah. Right? And I'm not saying that, that that I don't have friends that fart, but I'm talking about the friends that like fart any chance they can and they think it's like the funniest thing. Like, now that that stereotypical man does exist. Yeah. And that same man is the guy that would say purple headed yogurt slinger. Now I will admit I, I do like like to fart when I'm like around my daughter and she's being annoying just to get a reaction from her. Right. Because, you know, it's, it's it, when you know, you have a six-year-old, it's hilarious when they're like, ah, you <laughs> But like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a guy that would say that, though, you know. My dad would get me into his, he had this little tiny 
detective car. It was it was basically the exactly how you'd think a little detective car would look. I guess, as it would be a Chrysler. Wait, there was a small Chrysler. Yeah, I think it was a small Chrysler. Or, or, or Plymouth, Plymouth. I'm gonna find it, and then you're gonna see it, and you're gonna be like, "What the hell is that?" Um, you're gonna have to carry the conversation while I look up this stupid thing. <laughs> but 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 my dad would get me in the car in the morning. Okay, and he didn't. He never had a travel mug. You know, like. I, I drink coffee. I'm a big coffee drinker. So I have a bunch of travel mugs. In the morning, yeah. I, I put my drink in a travel mug. Now, when I had st- stepkids, I would sometimes not have a travel mug, and I'd like go out to the car with a cup, and it'd be like shaking and it'd spill all over me. I don't know. I don't. I, I kind of feel like travel lug, travel lug, travel <laughs> mug, or <laughs> Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> It's a relatively new development. Yeah, I don't remember I like so. I don't remember growing up, you know, when I was in elementary or middle school, like ever being in my parents' car with with them having a travel mug. Yeah, I, and then I think the other thing too, you didn't have drive through, you know, coffee places. You couldn't drive through Starbucks or Tim Hortons or whatever. So whatever they were drinking, they would make their you know their in their drip pot. <laughs> or whatever, drink their four or five cups, and then they'll be ready to go. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's a relatively new thing. I was talking to a friend this week, and we were saying how like once Starbucks hit the scene, like then like getting drive through coffee or going out and, and sitting at a coffee shop like became a thing. Like mm-hmm. there was one a spot on campus called Insomnia. Remember? Oh that? yeah, that was a beautiful place to go to. Uh, and th- there's always people playing chess, and it was cool too because it was like you could see like Abercrombie and Fitch dudes, and Gothic dudes, and like metal dudes, and whatever dudes, right? There was yeah uh, skaters, and it was just like all different kinds of people hanging out in a shop, and nobody gave a shit because it was just you're you're freaking cool if you're here. I was never there, so it wasn't that cool. You were never there. I was never there. I know what you're talking about. I've never. I didn't start drinking coffee until recently. Well, I think I would like uh, our buddy Goldie would take me there. Yeah, and um, sometimes we get like you know like a, maybe like a, you know, a cappuccino, maybe. But sometimes I just even get like hot chocolate. Yeah, but me and him would have these great conversations, and 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 I remember one night we just walked up and down High Street as it snowed. And it was freaking awesome. But you see that, that that car that I sent you? Oh, no. Hold on. Yeah, my father would get his little tiny coffee mug, and he would be shaking. Oh, Jesus, yeah. My dad would shake. Um, his hand would shake so bad, it was almost like he had Parkinson's. And and I don't make light of that. My, my grandma died of Parkinson's, but... Uh, he always had this very just like shaky hand. So it'd just be spilling all over his leg and spilling all over the car. And he was furnished a detective car. So he had a work car, which I think he thought was pretty cool. And that that thing? <laughs> but it was just this little. What is that? What, what, what does it oh, say? It's Chrysler what? I think it's, I don't know what it, it is. It, uh, the K car? It says, how the K car saved Chrysler. Which the funny thing about it is, so my father was driving this uh, K car, Mm -hmm. and he drove that for a while, and at the time, his partner was like 6'5", so imagine a 6'5 guy getting in that, and yeah, it was was bad, Um but then, then they, I think they upgraded him to like this nicer Buick, but uh, but we'd get in that little K car, and and he would just fart <laughs> these like I mean disgusting I mean like like they would be singeing your eyebrows like your eyelashes weren't as long when you got out of the car, <laughs> and and he would always he would be like he would fart and then he'd be like 
oh, God, excuse you. <laughs> excuse you. And then you'd just be like, you'd be throwing up in your own mouth. Like, like, like I said, your eyelashes were shorter. Like, afterwards, you didn't need a haircut. You know, it gave gave small kids glaucoma. You know, singe your nose hairs. Yeah. Removed uh, unwanted moles. You know he was saving it up for that for that car ride. I mean, it, 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 he smelled like he was dying. It was awful. And it's funny as I grow up and get older, like when he was farting in that car, and he was a detective. Which the juvenile detectives here are? They're the actual head of the, of being. They're the head of the the whole detective bureau. Mm-hmm. And he was like 38. I'm 38 now. He would have been 38. Yeah. Get in his car. Ripping ass. Ripping ass. Stunting my growth. <laughs> stunting your growth. How tall are you supposed to be? <laughs> I was supposed to be seven foot. <laughs> but it's those toxic gases. It smelled worse than the bomb of Hiroshima. Mm. That makes no damn sense. It doesn't make any sense. That make, um, so Zima. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it's just great to think about that and go, my dad was driving a K car, ripping ass. Yeah. Stunning my growth. And uh, I just remember that, that horrible car. But I remember at the time, because it was brand new when he got it, Mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, that's... It was also, that picture isn't doing it justice because it was fully tinted, like as black as possible tint. Because cops, this is bullshit, cops can have darker tint on their windows than you're illegally allowed to drive. Yeah. And did you know that if a dealer... If a car comes with tinted windows that are, and it's not aftermarket, that they're legally allowed to be darker. Wait, 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 say that again. Okay, so there's different laws. Yeah. At least in in Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. But but if I get it from the dealership and it was manufactured that way, it's allowed to be darker. Then if I go to put on tent aftermarket. But how would they know? They're not going to come up like, let's check out these windows. Oh, that's. Oh, I think there's a way for them to tell that they're aftermarket. I'm not really for sure. I have no idea. Yeah. And my father was bitching about that. Because he's like, you know, why can't a man, <laughs> if a man wants to tent out his windows. He's very anti-establishment now that he's well, yeah, because not a part he, of the establishment. <laughs> but you can have darker windows in certain places. So, like you know, I know places down south, let's say Texas, Florida, South Carolina, whatever, they can have a darker tint. Mm-hmm. I think that that has to do with also you know probably heat a little something like that. You know, right? Maybe yeah. They, maybe it's, yeah, maybe that. Yeah, they get more sun down there or something. I don't know. What was your first? What was your first car? You know what it was. No, do I? Yeah, you do. The neon. Yeah, I hate that. That car is shit. How did you get the neon though? Uh, what like, t- did you buy the de- neon? N- yeah, I ha- yeah, I bought it because I bought it like right before. Wait, hold on, what were you driving before that? I wasn't. So your parents never like let you drive their car? No. Well, no. Here, well, they did. Um. So like my parents' car, cars, I well it'd be one of two. My mom had a 1994 Honda Accord, uh-huh. and then my dad had I don't know what year it was. We'll say 92. It was a old Oldsmobile Cutlass Cutlass Supreme. Uh-huh. Um, but, but so there are roughly two newerish cars. Yeah, I mean, because you you started driving what 96? No, seven? I didn't. No, I didn't get my license until after I graduated high school. I was oh. I was eighteen, almost nineteen. You're the same here, because I had no reason to drive. I didn't I didn't work. 
and <laughs> I didn't work. So it's not like I needed to drive myself to work or anything. I or didn't have a job. Didn't have a job. Yeah, that was the other thing too. Is like I thought about it. I was like, okay, if I got a license, I really don't have anything to drive. Uh-huh. I, I, I wasn't going to go out and buy myself a car. My parents weren't going to buy me a car. So where were you working when when you bought the car? Radio Shack. Oh, that's right. I worked at Radio Shack. I remember you working at Radio Shack now. That I totally was, forgot about that. Yeah, that was worked well at the shack. Well, that was one of my first jobs. I had two quote unquote jobs before that that I didn't last very long at. <laughs> what were they? Uh, first, I worked at at Arby's for about a week, <laughs> maybe two, three. Why did you get did you get fired or you quit? Uh, I I quit. I quit both. Uh, so I I worked there and I quit because it sucked. And then I worked at Cracker Barrel for about a week. <laughs> and I quit there because I was a dishwasher. And it my last day, if I remember correctly, like I had to work clothes. Oh, this actually, there's a good story about this too. Uh, I had to work clothes and then I had to open up the next day. And so that closing, I didn't think, I don't think I got out until after 2 a.m. Wow. And then I slept for a few hours and had to get up for... A Sunday morning. Sunday morning at Cracker Barrel was hell. Yeah. And so that Sunday morning I came in, I was working, and someone threw up in the bathroom. And so, of course, they come to dishwashers and said, go clean it up. Oh, no. Nope, 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 nope. That was about it, and you I was didn't done. Cl- you didn't clean it up? You just walked out? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I think I think uh, POD cleaned it out, actually. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Is this how you met Dave? No, I knew Dave before that. Okay. But, uh... Me and Dave, we actually, I think we, I think we started at the same time. We might've actually had like a group interview together. How long did Dave work there? I don't, I don't know. Cracker Barrel. I don't know. Oh my God. But, what a job. but I forgot about this too. So the night before I quit, um, so cleaning up. <laughs> he stole a bunch of money. No, I didn't. No. So. I so, knew I was going to get busted. So cleaning up, you know, closing sucked because like. You're, you basically have to wait on like the chefs or whatever to get all their pans and stuff back to you in time so you can wash it. And so we're going through washing everything. It was taking forever and we're just about done. And then, um, chef guy brings back more. It's like, you know, (laughs) after 1 a.m. or something, it's like, here's some more. Chef guy. (laughs) And one of them was like a pan of like mashed potatoes that like didn't, weren't even touched. And so I said, fuck this. I'm not watching this. So I took it and I hit it back in like the, like where they, where the storage is, where they keep like all the, all the clean pans. And so I put it in back. So my thought was if I put it in the very back, they won't find this for a while. And so I won't be around. So they won't be like, right. So you knew you're going to quit. Oh yeah. I'm going to quit. So, so I did that. I quit done. And then, um, it was a while later, like I was talking to Dave and I mentioned it. I was like, oh, Dave, you know, my last night that I was there, I, I had a pan of mashed potatoes that I hid. <laughs> and he goes, that was you? He's like, we found that like months later and it was like moldy and disgusting. And I had to clean it out. <laughs> so they did eventually find it. It took a month to find it. That was you. That was me and the mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> Mother sucker. I'm out. Welcome to this world. Ah, oh, Cracker Barrel. So then, but you're you're always like uh, into technology. Yeah. Did you have a pager? No, never had a pager. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't think. No, I had. I, um, I know Justin had a pager, but I don't remember. I don't remember if Paul did. See, I didn't because when I actually started working and when like when I started at Radio Shack, that was when um, pagers were on the outs. Okay. So it was when you remember. Right. You know, I think I think the first like major like cell phone service in the area was like Aerial PCS or something like that. But you could get those through Radio Shack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I waited and like I don't know how long I was at Radio Shack before. I think it was um, yeah, because Sprint I would, came I, in. I would come visit you at Radio Shack. Oh yeah, because we weren't doing anything. I can't rem- I can't believe I didn't remember that. Yeah, you worked there for a while. I was there for a few years. And there was like a guy there that you were friends with, but he was also kind of a dick. Sean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sean. He was like a year older than me. 
Yeah. So he was he he would have he graduated with Nick. Yeah, nice guy. To to pe- to some people, right? He was funny though. I mean, like, I mean, he was always nice to me. Yeah, but uh, but he was he had um he had just one of those personalities where he could rub you the wrong way very easily. Yeah, I th- he he was one of those guys that he was totally fine with you hating him, mm-hmm. and like he would push that that button. Yeah, you know, like what well, you know, yeah. So, so then when you started working at Radio Shack, then you're like, I'm going to buy a, a neon. <laughs> well, it wasn't. I'm going to go buy a neon. It was. I need to go buy a car. Right. And this is a car that I can afford. What was the payments a month? Do you uh, remember? Two two fifty eight, something around there. Wow, that would have been. That was a lot of money <laughs> back, back in the then. day. Was that was a lot of money? Now, yeah. now I think the average car payment was like. 500 bucks. Yeah. Is that ridiculous? Yeah. Got buddies of mine paying like seven, 800 bucks a month for a truck. That's stupid. Which is weird too, because it's, uh, look, it would be different if like that was your work truck mm-hmm. and that's how you made a living. You know, like uh, one of our buddies, uh, JT, for the longest time, he, he had a you know big truck payment. Yeah. But his truck was his office. He was a contractor. Uh, so you they're know. paying seven, 800 bucks a month. For the truck now, how much are they paying in gas? Um, they're probably paying a ton in gas as well, right? Um, I mean the tanks are probably a little bit bigger. I don't think it's as bad as it once was because mm-hmm. because gas prices aren't. But so I'm talking high. about the, you're talking about mileage though. Like how many right, how right, many miles right. per gallon are they getting? They're actually getting better now, so you can get like twenty one, you know, highway. Mm-hmm. Welcome, welcome to car talk. Yeah, be- better than better than before, but it's but it's insane to me. So, <laughs> so wait, which dealership did you get this at? <laughs> I'm so interested in this because like I, it was a long time. Like I had a I had a lot. Um, I had a long process before I actually got to the adulthood of like okay, I need to buy a car. Yeah, like I I had a. Uh, a, a Dodge Omni. Oh yeah, that was given to me by my grandparents. I remember that. The best thing about it was, my grandfather said, "If you can get it started, you can have it." <laughs> <laughs> and they they were in Florida at the mm-hmm. time. They because they would go live in uh, Florida for half the year, and so they had this, you know, house that they've been at the whole time. Uh, they had it built. And it's a real small house. It was a small three bedroom house. Yeah. But there was five kids. So there's seven people total Jeez. in this pretty small house. Okay. And uh at one car garage and so they would just park it in the garage when they went to Florida. So it was like if you can get it started, you can have it. So I remember going over and my, my grandparents' house always smelled like red wine and uh, a supreme pizza. <laughs> Not pepperoni pizza, supreme pizza. And so they had this, li- like, you know, like their, they had a screen door going into the house from the garage. And it was like, Rah! like it was real loud. Open up. I grab the keys. I get in the car. I'm so excited because it looks way better than I remember it. But what I didn't know was that my uncle at one point bought the same car as them. Yeah. But like a shitty version that was like like the paint was coming off the top, oh, and, and yeah, yeah. like the hood and the top, and it was kind of gross looking. Mm-hmm. But but that's what I remember them driving. But that was my uncle's car. So now I go there and I'm going, this car, like, looks pretty good for what it is, right? Yeah. And it has fifty like four thousand miles. So I got that car and like. 98, 99. Yeah. 99. Yeah, probably 99, 2000. And it was an 86. But so I got in and I turned the key. And the son of a bitch wouldn't start. <laughs> and I remember thinking, ah, oh, there goes me having a car. May, I don't know if I'm making this up, but I, I remember that car. Well, I do remember the car. And I, for some reason, I'm I'm picturing like, you stuffing, like your 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 band equipment, like in the back. I I I clearly remember like 
a, your base, like basically filling up the whole back of that car. Yeah, well, see, I wonder if I had that car when we went to the studio that one time. And oh. I had to fill up like my car with like a guitar amp yeah, and yeah, bass yeah. amp. And, and <laughs> it had a hatchback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it had 54,000 miles. And I remember my grandpa saying, you can have that car if you can get it started. And I, so weirdly, I remember getting out of the car because it, it wouldn't start. Yeah. And thinking, this, this isn't right. I'm lucky. I'm a lucky person. I'm getting in this car for free. It's going to start. And I got in the car, turned the key, started right up. There you go. And started backing out. And I remember being nervous as hell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, here we go. This son of a bitch gonna blow up. Well, I remember thinking, this is my responsibility now. The car? The Omni? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. This is all on me now. This is your baby. And not even that. <laughs> my baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I had that, I had that car. I had to replace so many damn windows in the car because people would bust the window out to steal the CD player. <laughs> It was like the only thing, like the, the the best thing was, is is I remember getting the car and then asking, my grandparents wanted to know what I wanted for um, Christmas. Yeah. And I wanted a CD player, a car CD player. Yeah. And so they got me one and it, I've never heard of the brand. And, but it was cool because everything was like neon green lights. Mm-hmm. Like I just remember like the face, like the display and everything was cool. Yeah. And my buddy JT put it in, and but then like so it was like silver with green, you know, lights that shine through. Yeah. But eventually, the silver was wearing off, <laughs> so it just looked like a green blob. Yeah. But yeah, I think I had like the car broken into like five or six times for people to steal, but they never stole the, the CD player. It wasn't even. They looked at it like, "What is?" Nope. I think they got in and they're like, "I've never heard of this." <laughs> <laughs> or why Why are there no numbers on here? It's just a green blob. And, like, that's the thing. Like, I mean, it took a, a year or so. But that was the thing. Like, I remember my grandpa saying, if you could get it running, it's yours. Yeah. I said, awesome. I got it running. And then I remember talking to him. Like, maybe I, like, drove by when they came back into town to thank him. Yeah. And then, like, to also tell him, like, yeah, I cleaned it out and I got a tune-up, you know, just to let him know what was going on. Yeah. And, um... And I remember like stopping by and going, "Hey, I got it running pretty good." And he like came out and he like went over the car with me, like do this. And if the car doesn't start, you want to push your foot foot down and then bring it up halfway, and <laughs> you know all these things. And he said to me, "I'll be surprised if you can la- if it lasts a couple months." Oh damn, yeah. And I remember the 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 mileage gauge. Mm-hmm. It didn't go to a hundred thousand. So it, it, it would just it would go back to zero. <laughs> but I remember the day that I was <laughs> flipping it over. See, that's when you know you do not have a good car. Oh. It's when they're like, this, "There's no way this car mean? is going to meet a hundred thousand miles." It's not a good car. Everybody thought it wouldn't make it, and uh, that just shows you how much I drove it. I mean, you're you're looking to turn that thing over. I need to drive about. 50,000 miles. Yeah. So the average person what drives, what do you think, 20,000 miles a year? Eh, yeah. Maybe 30? 20, 20 or 30. Yeah. So Maybe. let's just say on the high side it was 30. So I'd have to drive that mm-hmm. car that nobody thought would make it a couple weeks. I'd have to drive for a couple years. Yeah. And I used to, <laughs> used to get out of your apartment and try to start that car in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> you know you have a bad car, yeah. When your when your other poor friends, because everybody's poor, tell you your car sucks, <laughs> and I'd be like, "Well, you care." You know what I mean? Like I drive myself. Like I didn't drive anybody ever. Like it wasn't like, "Hey, get in my car, let's go." And I remember like um, Craig and and Dave and all those guys going, "Your car sucks," and thinking. Why does my car suck? And they're like, because we can hear you try to start it in the morning. 
we can hear you for 15 minutes trying to get your car going. <laughs> but side note, P.O.D. had uh, pissed off Dave. Yeah. Ha- had a, a car. I think it was an Escort. Yeah. And he had, yeah, he had that like uh, turquoise Escort. The And the funniest thing, I, I remember we were listening to the, the band at the drive-in. Really cool band. And we jump on the freeway in the summer. And he turned off the air conditioner because his car couldn't get up to speed <laughs> with the air <laughs> conditioner on. And I remember like feeling a little bit <laughs> less shitty about my car. When you had to turn off the air conditioner? Yeah. It's like, hold on. <laughs> I'm stuck at 40. I had to turn off the, the AC so I can hit 60. Turn off the AC. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth. 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 All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Maybe and, maybe and, next week we can finish this, the Zima story. No, I didn't want to finish the story. <laughs> I don't want to finish that story. I don't want to finish the Zima story. I just want to say there was a night where we drank Zima, and that was yeah. it. Yep. So I'm very familiar with the Zima. I don't know much about this White Claw. All right. But thanks for joining us in this weird, weird world. Check us out on the interwebs. Where can they find us? You can find us at CaptainAnnMorgan.com. That's CaptainAndMorgan.com. Make sure you tell a friend. And your grandma. And tell your mother. Maybe your dad. Well, they probably won't care. They'll be like, all they talk about is the (laughs) mid-90s. But we appreciate you joining us here in the garage. And and maybe, maybe you need... Uh, some buddies. Did I just say garage? You did. We are in the garage. Wait, today. We, we actually are in the garage. This is our first. This is our first recording where we're in the same area. Yeah. Mostly it's remote, uh, so it normally smells better. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being our friends, and uh, welcome to our weird, weird worlds. Give me a hug. Thanks for listening to Captain and Morgan. If you like the show and want to know more, check out CaptainandMorgan.com. Please also remember to subscribe to Captain and Morgan on YouTube or catch it live on Discord. You can also follow Captain and Morgan on Instagram at the Captain and Morgan or on Twitter at Cap and Morgan. 